A Chinese word processor scans users' documents and deletes content that does not comply with the Chinese Communist Party. Users in China are angry that their privacy has been violated and are switching to Microsoft. China's foreign minister produced a new plan for U.S.-China relations. What did he propose? Hong Kong will adopt China's health code app, Leave Home Safe. Some describe it as a digital totalitarianism. Finally, a man named Lu Yi is declared to be behind the frozen banks in China. Protests asking for their money back continue in China, and police are beating the bank customers. Welcome to Sound of Hope News. My name is Daniela Wollensack, and today is July 13th. On July 11th, the topic WPS deletes users' local files topped Weibo's hot search list. WPS is a word processing system developed by Kingsoft Software. Some netizens said, It's really scary. Whatever I do, I'm being monitored. According to Sina Technology, a netizen named Just Want to Make a Few Bucks said that he used WPS to write a 1 million plus word novel. Without his knowledge, WPS scanned his document and blocked it. The reason was as the file contains illicit content, access is prohibited. The WPS's response sparked a massive backlash from netizens. They angrily questioned the developer, Kingsoft, asking what right they have to view private user files and what legal basis and authority the company has to judge whether documents are in violation. Some netizens commented, It felt like running naked on the internet, no privacy at all. No wonder people dislike using Chinese products. WPS then issued a statement in response, saying that sharing the document link with others is in violation of the user's rules. WPS therefore prohibited others from accessing the link. Just want to make a few bucks, then posted that his documents were completely legal. Right now, the blocked document has only been shared with WPS investigation staff. WPS then admitted that the audit system had misjudged sensitive words and that the document did not contain prohibited contents. They promised to correct the system. Another netizen had also noticed the WPS censored certain words. Once these terms are detected, cloud files and local files of the document are deleted. Because of this, many scriptwriters and companies in internet writing circles are switching to Microsoft Office. Their manuscripts are often a million words long, and everyone is afraid that these will just vaporize for no reason. Kingsoft Software is one of the largest desktop software developers in China. Besides WPS, Kingsoft PowerWord, Kingsoft Express Translation, and Kingsoft Internet Security are some of its most well-known products. Kingsoft Internet Security has been named by many users as villain software. It often automatically installs itself on your computer without you knowing. It occupies a huge amount of space. It also installs other rogue software onto your computer. When you boot up your computer, pop-up windows with vulgar contents often appear. Sometimes the pop-ups remain alive even after the computer is shut down. Uninstalling Kingsoft Internet Security is also troublesome. You first must answer a series of questions and then go to the control panel to finish the job. There are rumors that Biden and Xi Jinping are in discussions. Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi said that he met with the U.S. Secretary of State, Blinken, recently and proposed a plan for the U.S.-China coexistence in the Asia-Pacific region. This was in a speech at the Association of Southeast Asian Nations in Jakarta on July 11th. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Wang Wenbin echoed the sentiment that the U.S. and China should work together. According to Bloomberg, the Chinese side proposed rules to create healthy interaction in the Asia-Pacific region. These include supporting the ASEAN Center, maintaining the existing framework for regional cooperation, respecting each other's legitimate rights and interests in the region, and providing more public money to the region to promote stability. While Wang describes one side of the plan, he semi-threateningly reminded Southeast Asian countries not to become pawns of global powers and intervene in unnecessary conflicts. This seems to be a move against the U.S., We see more of this two-sided behavior from China on the other side of the Asia-Pacific. Just after Wang Yi made these remarks, word spread in the South Pacific that the island nation of Kiribati would withdraw from the Pacific Islands Forum, PIF. Some members suspect that it was the combination of the CCP's bribery plus threats against Kiribati that worked.
Anna Powles, a senior lecturer at Mass University in New Zealand, analyzed. While it is not yet known what role the Chinese Communist Party played in this decision, what is certain is that it was able to obtain a particular benefit from an isolated Galibas. FBI Director Christopher Wray recently warned, as the U.S. and its allies focus on the Russia-Ukraine war, the U.S. and its allies must keep in mind that the greatest threat is the Chinese Communist Party's ambition to infiltrate countries. The Financial Times reported that Ray also raised the issue during his visit to the United Kingdom earlier this month to raise global alarm. He said, We want to confirm to each other that the Chinese Communist Party is by all accounts the greatest, broadest, most comprehensive and long-lasting threat that must be kept in mind. Hong Kong will introduce the China-style electronic health code system to curb the spread of coronavirus on Friday. Those in home isolation will be forced to wear a bracelet tracking their movements. It is to ensure they stay in their buildings during quarantine. The new health secretary in Hong Kong, Dr. Lo Cheng Mao, stated on Monday, July 11th, that the health code system is to fight COVID infections without tightening social distancing measures. Under the health code system, the citizens will be allowed to enter public spaces if the QR code on their account is green. The code turns yellow if people have been in close contact with an infected person and turns red if they have tested positive for the virus, The Guardian reported. According to the statement, arriving travelers will be marked yellow. The city maintains strict travel restrictions, imposing a seven-day hotel quarantine for arrivals. The new system will be rolled out in the Leave Home Safe app introduced last year. The authority said breaching a mandatory quarantine order carries a fine of up to 3,200 US dollars and up to six months in jail. The planned health code system has sparked concerns over privacy and social control. Human rights watchdog criticized the China style health code system as an invasion of privacy. They warned that Beijing could use the collected data to control freedoms. Last week, Chinese authorities used the health code system to prevent residents from protesting at the People's Bank of China in Zhengzhou, Henan province. The folk there cannot access their earnings. The 33-year-old Hong Kong resident Wang Wingtang said, This is a massive privacy issue. It's like placing a target on the back of people who receive red or yellow codes. And here, there is still the attitude where people treat those with COVID-19 as outcasts, ABC News reported. Hong Kong current affairs commentator Sang Fu predicted that it's only a matter of time before the Chinese and Hong Kong systems are fully integrated. The Leave Home Safe app will soon control personal data and be able to penetrate biometrics. Under these rules, Hong Kong will become a digital totalitarian state. Experts in Hong Kong also warned that the quarantine bracelets may sway people to not report positive test results. It is out of fear that their normal lives will be majorly disrupted. Chair Professor of Epidemiology at the University of Hong Kong, Ben Kowling, said, Hong Kong is reporting an average of about 2,500 cases a day now, but future statistics may be lower. It is not because transmission has gone down, but because people are not reporting. Kowling added, most other parts of the world are going down the direction of not controlling transmission, but minimizing severe cases. The introduction of China's system is going in the other direction, back toward more stringent control. In Zhengzhou, Henan, China, thousands of bank customers were beaten and violently suppressed when they demonstrated because their money was frozen. It was followed by extreme control of online speech. On July 11th, the Xuchang City Public Security Bureau declared the culprit was a man named Lu Yi. He had manipulated bank executives and controlled several village banks. They had illegally promoted financial products and fund transfers through a third-party internet financial platform. The authorities also announced that customers with a loss of 50,000 yuan or less would be paid, but the customers did not believe it. Many of them said that they had not yet received their money. They commented online, We got branded with two red coats and a round of beatings in exchange for our money. Can we get some compensation for being beaten up? And, it's all a routine, no sincerity. The media found that the announced suspect, Lu Yi, was the controller of Henan New Fortune Group. Still, his name was not registered in the Industry and Commerce Department. At the same time, Louis is also the chairperson of a CCP media group in the United States to tell China's good stories overseas. In addition to the four deposit frozen banks, 
26 banks are inextricably linked with the new fortune group. In May, Henan's banking regulator accused the four leaders in Henan of illegal fundraising. It labeled people whose deposits were frozen as financial consumers rather than bank depositors. That implies authorities do not want Safer's money to be protected by deposit insurance. Commentator Ke Xu believes that the investigation the Henan Banking and Insurance Regulatory Bureau announced is likely just a delaying tactic. Right now, all the authorities want is to cool things down. Yet, this announcement calls the incident a financial product crime, which is the same as denying customers their lost money. It appears the Henan Authority is trying to reduce the number of protesters by paying back folks who lost smaller sums of money. But this is still a lot of money. Whether this money comes from the Henan government or other banks, there is still a shortage of funds. Those who have lost large sums of money are still at the front lines of the protests. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. See you tomorrow.